Okay, so let's get into the setup of the Xiaomi Mi Wi-Fi extender. Uh, it's a little bit more close up. Just got a logo on the back. Of course, it has this cover to protect the USB socket plug. Sorry, when it's not in use. Um, again, this is a pivoting plug. On the front side, uh, let's get some focus here. You have. Uh, a reset port which you need a pin to depress the little switch inside there and this indicator light so now when you plug this in to its power supply get the direction correct here this battery I'll turn it on okay this is what you're gonna see it's gonna light up yellow and then it will start to to blink that means that it's powered on, but it's not connected to anything. Now, again, if this ever needs to be reset, you will want to press the reset uh, switch with a pin or something pointed and small enough to get into that hole. But again, when this is on and you see the yellow LED light and it's flashing, uh, that means that this is turned on. It's powered on, but it is not connected to anything. One other thing I might add is if you do ever need to reset your Xiaomi Mi Wi-Fi extender, it doesn't reset by just a quick press of the reset switch, at least not that I've noticed. You will want to press and hold this for about 10 seconds just to be sure that all the stored data or whatever is inside there is cleared out and it has reset. Now, the next thing you're going to need to do to complete your setup of your Wi-Fi Xiaomi Wi-Fi extender is install the Xiaomi Mi Home app, which is this one right there. I've already got it installed in my phone. Now, if you just search the Google Play Store for Mi Home, you're going to see a number of various different apps that are titled Mi Home. Make sure you have the correct one. Again, it has this green logo on here. I've already got it installed in my phone. Um, that's what the logo looks like. Okay, once you have the app installed, go ahead and open it up. And this is the screen that you will see. Uh, your next step is going to be that you need to set up an online account. Now, the purpose for installing the app and setting up the online account is so that the extender itself can detect any available Wi-Fi signal that's within its range without it actually having to connect to a signal and it's going to report that back to your phone via this app. So once again, you need to install this app, start it up and register with an online account. It's going to communicate with the cloud via the internet and, and whatnot. And that's going to show you on your phone or your tablet any available Wi-Fi signal that's within range that's available for the extender to connect to and then it's going to report back and display that on your phone screen. Once you have the online account set up, the next thing to do is go ahead and plug your Wi-Fi extender into a power source. Make sure it's powered on. And then at this point, you're just gonna wait a few moments. This would be a good time to also restart the Xiaomi Mi app. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to clear it out here. And then I'm going to go back and restart it again. Now during this whole process, you want to make sure that your phone or tablet is connected to the internet, either via Wi-Fi, preferably Wi-Fi, or you could also do it via 4G. Now wait a few moments and within a few moments, you should see up in your notification, the Xiaomi Mi icon as you can see it's this little green icon here um, and it's going to say here new device is found with a little bit of a code after that so go ahead and you know open that notification up and i'm going to press on there now it's going to say connect to wi-fi now this screen is going to display via this drop down menu here all of the available Wi-Fi signals that are within range to where your Xiaomi 
extender can connect to. Okay, the next thing you're going to do now is power on your Bebop drone and give it a chance, give it a few moments to boot up and broadcast its Wi-Fi signal. Also, very important, uh, you will need to have the SSID of your Parrot's, of your Bebop's Wi-Fi password protected. Uh, the reason for that is, is that this Xiaomi Wi-Fi extender is made in such a way that it will not connect to any Wi-Fi network or any Wi-Fi signal that is not WPA password protected. So once again, make sure you have your Bebop password protected. Uh, that was just enabled with the latest uh, Parrot Bebop firmware update, so make sure you have that done. Next thing we're going to do is go here. This is a list of all of the available Wi-Fi signals that my Wi-Fi extender can connect to within range. So as you see here, I have Bebop Drone. It says it's saved and secured with WPA2. That's what we want to connect the extender to the Bebop. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and collect, connect that. I've already got the password entered in here from from a uh, previous time. So now I'm going to click next. Now it says phone is trying to connect to router. In this case, router meaning the Bebop drone, which it successfully did that. Now you'll see that the phone will automatically connect back to the Bebop drone. I'm not sure why it does this, um, but disregard that that's not important. The next thing it's going to do at this point, it's going to say router is trying to connect to me cloud. Now, again, in this case, the router is substituted for the Bebop drone. And obviously the Bebop itself does not connect to the internet. So you're going to get this error. It says couldn't connect, reset the device and try again. Very important here to disregard that notification and press at the bottom continue anyway. Once you get, once you press continue anyway, you're going to see the screen it says connect to other devices, blah, blah, blah. And you're going to wait, uh, wait a, a couple of minutes at most while it goes through this, some sort of this setup sequence. 30%. I'm going to pause this and come back when it's done. Okay, setup has been complete. Um, you may notice in some cases that it appears like the app may crash upon the completion of that last uh, sequence. If it does, not really anything to worry about. If it completes just fine, great. If not, still nothing to worry about. Uh, what you're going to look for now is we're going to look at the extender itself. Okay, looking at the extender itself, with the Bebop still powered on and running, you'll notice that the blue LED on the extender, or the LED light, sorry, is now a steady blue. Remember when we first started, it was flashing yellow. Now it's steady blue. This means that the extender is now connected to the Wi-Fi signal on the Bebop drone. Now this setup procedure that we just went through only has to be done one time. The only time it would ever have to be done a second time is if for whatever reason you reset your Bebop or you reset this extender. As long as you didn't reset either of these, from this point on, it's just plug and play. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this, power it off, I'm gonna plug it back in. Again, I don't know if you can hear the fan on the Bebop running, but my Bebop is powered on right now. It is um, broadcasting its Wi-Fi signal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this into a power supply. And you can see yellow, means that it's powered on. It's going to start uh, flashing yellow, which means powered on but not connected to anything. And look at that. Steady blue means now it is connected to the Bebop. Let's do it one more time. Unplug, powered off. Plug it in. Powered on, yellow indicator. It's going to flash a few times. And then it should go within a moment or two, it should go straight to blue. There we go, blue. Again, once, it's, once the LED shows steady blue, that means a solid connection has been established between the Bebop and the extender. 
Now, if you're out flying with this setup, and for any reason you happen to see this light go back to flashing yellow mode, obviously that means that you have lost connection uh, between, or you have lost connection from the extender to the Bebop drone most likely because you went out of range. You flew too far, or maybe you're in an area with some heavy interference, but as long as you are sensible about your flying and don't go too far with it, that should never be an issue. So once again, as long as this light is steady blue, that means that a connection has been established between the, B the Xiaomi extender and the Bebop drone. Okay, so now the last and final step to get the, to complete the setup and to get this all working is to connect your phone or tablet to the extender. So you're going to go into your phone's Wi-Fi settings, and you can see in mine here I have uh, the Bebop drone, which it currently says is connected to. In other words, my phone is connected directly to the Wi-Fi on the Bebop. But that's not what we want here. The Bebop, I'm sorry, the extender is going to display an SSID, which is going to be whatever your Wi-Fi is named. So in other words, if you renamed your Bebop, say, John's Drone, it's going to show up as John's Drone, but the extender is going to display John's Drone Plus. In my case, I didn't rename my Bebop. It's just called Bebop Drone and blah, 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 this number. So it's going to display, the extender is going to display the name of the drone and then underscore plus. So I'm going to select that. It's going to ask me if I want to connect. Yes, connect. So I'm going to, my phone is now disconnecting directly from the Bebop and it has now just connected to the extender. So basically what we have here is a connection, a Wi-Fi connection from my phone to the extender and in turn the extender is connected to the Bebop drone. And that's all there is to it. The setup is now complete. Once again this only has to be done, the setup procedure only has to be done one time. That is unless you reset your drone and or reset the extender. As long as you don't reset the drone or the extender it's just plug and play. Just plug the extender into a power supply, into a battery, and start your piloting app up, and you are ready to fly as normal. Works really well. Now, real quick, before this comes to an end, let's talk about piloting apps for a moment. Of course, there are a number of various uh, piloting apps available. Some are better than others. Some serve slightly different purposes than others. Uh, Free Flight 3, obviously, being the default piloting app. Free Flight 3 obviously is very good but it does have some limitations and in some cases it may not work at all or at least it won't work well with a gaming controller like I have set up here. The app that I would strongly recommend in this case is this one up here called AR Pro 3. AR Pro 3 has a ton of additional features and settings uh, that make manual piloting of your Bebop drone uh, so much better than any other app. Um, it does have a follow me function, but I find that AR Pro 3 is best used for a more advanced uh, manual pipe, uh, manual piloting scenario. So this is what the home screen looks like. Um, I'm not going to go into too many different features about the app, uh, but again, Bebop Drone is on and running. So I'm going to cl click on the or press the little Bebop icon. And this is the screen uh, that you're going to see, uh, the main piloting screen. Now one of the great things about AR Pro 3 is that it is designed or has been developed for use with a gaming controller. With a PS3 controller, it can be used with Bluetooth, although as I said earlier in the beginning of this video, I don't really recommend Bluetooth. But a USB controller like a PS3, PS4, or Xbox 360. 
Now when I go ahead and plug in my USB cable to my phone like I've just done, you'll see that the touchscreen joystick controls disappear. That's a cool feature. It gives you more viewable uh, screen area. It's a feature within the app settings that you can turn on and off. You can disable it or you can have them on the screen full time if you wish. Quick look at the settings menu. You can see it's packed with uh, various settings. Uh, it's got way more settings which give you way more control and fine tunability over the standard Free Flight 3 app. Now earlier in this video I mentioned something about why it's a good idea to use a long um, USB cable to connect your Android phone to the controller and here's why. If I go into general settings you will see that, guess what? Cardboard piloting view. I'm sure everybody knows what cardboard piloting view is but in case you don't, if you have a pair of uh, VR glasses I guess they're called or, or a cardboard viewer you can really get the immersive FPV experience by using the cardboard mode which again it's selectable on and off um, so therefore you want a slightly longer USB cable to reach that little bit of extra distance from your having the phone up to your face uh, down to your handheld controller so again that's why I would recommend using a longer USB cable so that's basically it folks I've covered all of the hardware uh, once again I have included links in the description of this video to eBay where you can purchase each one of these components separately um, so yeah click on the links you'll find everything you need I really appreciate your time checking this video out if you find that this video has been helpful please like share and subscribe to my channel and share it with the other Bebop drone pilots that you think may get some benefit from this once again thanks a lot peace out